Amen. Amen. Are you ready to worship? Okay, that's what God expects when you come in these doors. You're here in His presence to worship Him and to be blessed. Do you want to be blessed this morning? Okay, we got to worship God. Let's pray. Father, God, once again, thank you for such a beautiful day. God, for the sunshine. God, I know that we're individuals. Some lack the sun, some lack the clouds, some lack the cool, some lack the hot. But God, what we can agree on, we are here to worship you this morning. We want to tell you before we begin to worship that we thank you for your grace, Jesus. That you loved us enough to die for our sin. And we're here to tell you thank you and to praise you. And we do it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Stand with us as we get ready to worship our Lord and Savior this morning, singing Holy, Holy, Holy. <clears throat> today. Amen. <laughs> oh, let's just keep it going today and sing God's Not Dead. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
Father, God, once again, you have blessed us with so many good gifts. And God, you always give us a chance to return praise. And God, as we pass these offering plates, God, we just ask you to touch the heart of every person in this sanctuary. And make them know, God, how much you love them. Remind them, God, of what you've done for them. And God, give them a chance to return just a small portion to your kingdom to be used for your glory. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
let us pray. Dear Lord, as we come before you, we thank you first for being an awesome God. Thank you for sending Jesus because he gave everything that we might have salvation. Lord, we ask that you bless this offering, multiply it for its intended use, and we'll give you the praise forever. In Jesus' name, amen. what Sunday night is coming up <laughs> it's family fun night yay everybody clap yay you got to be excited or we're not going to have a good time we got a lot of good things planned we're going to have a family family fun night next Sunday night starting at six o'clock down at the fellowship hall we will eat from six to seven and then we're going to have trunk or treat. Yay! Y'all got to get excited. We're in God's house today. This is fun fellowship. Amen? All right. So next Sunday, trunk or treat. How many people you got signed up, Rhonda? We have 15 cars signed up. That's good, but I'm going to challenge you for more because there's more than 15 cars in this church. Okay, so it's kind of sad to me that only 15 people have signed up. This is Stephanie speaking on my behalf, nobody else's. But come on, guys, 15 cars. It's great, but everybody should be participating. It's going to be fun. This is not just for the young people to do their trunks. This is for young, old, and middle. Everybody can pull a trunk up, sit at your trunk, and hand out candy. So if you will please participate with your vehicle, see Miss Rhonda. At this point, I don't even care if you decorate your trunk. Put a pumpkin in it and call it a decoration and hand out candy, but at least you're participating. Amen? Amen. That was weak. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Come on now. Y'all don't have the pastor to do this, so I got to do it for him. <laughs> This is about fun and fellowship. Our church has got to start getting back in the place where we want to do and volunteer and become a church again. And we can't do that if we're always relying on somebody else to do it for us. Because guess what? You're all going to want to come eat. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so help us participate. Remember, this ain't about us. This is about the kids. We're doing this for them. And the more cars they have, the less circles they have to run in. Right? We can spread them out. So if you will volunteer your trunk, Please see Miss Rhonda. If you're hesitating because you don't know how to decorate a trunk or you don't know what we're talking about, come see me. I'll give you plenty of ideas. Or, or Miss Rhonda, okay? So next Sunday night, 6 to 7, come to eat because we're cutting it off at 7, so don't show up late. And then we're going to start the trunk or treat and just sit around and have a good time together. Amen? Amen. I just have two quick announcements for Soul House. One, um, if, the, if you signed up to help with Soul House, and we have a good bit of participants there, thank you. Um, we will get the rotation going at the beginning of the year. We've got Thanksgiving coming up and Christmas, so we're going to kind of cover those. But if you're wondering, well, when, when's Rebecca going to tell me something? It, it'll be the beginning of the year, okay? So, um, And the second thing is usually we have family night, and we don't have Soul House that last Wednesday of the month, but we are going to have Soul House this Wednesday because we are going to enter into the youth pumpkin contest. We're going to take them down. <laughs> So we need all these youngins to show up Wednesday so we can work on decorating pumpkins so we can put a few in, in the contest. Okay. The youth are going to win. <laughs> you didn't clap on that. The youth are going to win. <laughs> Listen, if y'all if, if y'all don't start clapping, I'm going to stand up here and do jokes all night. <laughs> on to
When the best of me is barely breathing When I'm not somebody I believe in Hold on to me When I miss the light the night is stolen When I'm slamming all the doors you've opened Hold on to me Hold on to me Hold on to me when it's too dark to see you When I am sure Let me just share before we pray. We have a visitor this morning. We may have more, but I see one. And his name is Stephen Scruggs. You know, you may not know him, but God knows him. He knows his name. And God's glad you're here. And we're glad you're here. I look around. And I see several of our regular members that are back in church. We welcome every one of you. We've missed you. We understand that circumstance and situations sometimes creates a problem. But there is no problem to be for God to solve. So we're glad you're here. Brenda has had a surgery. So far, she's doing well. Um, Rhonda's son, Matthew Hersey, is possibly pending surgery Tuesday. We are praying that God will take care of it before, and he won't have to have it. But if he does, God's in control. Let me just share a few of our needs. Church, I want you, you know, there's not one of you that doesn't go through issues or situations in your life. 
and you need God, and we pray for each other. But these these names that I'm going to call are people that have gone through stressful, stressful family things. Continue to remember our pastor, Danny. You know, he can tell me everything that the surgeon did. I can have compassion for him. I can agree with him. But I don't feel a bit of pain. He's the one that has the pain. But he is the one that knows that God's in control. God has and already healed him. It's going to take a little time. But at the right time, he's going to be standing here talking to you. And you won't have to listen to me. So, so just give God thanks. Um, continue to remember Felix Howell and the Tatum family for their lives. I'm just going to call names of people who are going through the things. Remember Jimmy Brown, Maria Oliver, Dina Boyd, Leslie White, Donna O'Berry, David Callahan, and Christy Jill. Now, I know there's others, but let's just pray. Commit it to God and allow God to bring healing. <clears throat> Father, God, I stand before you this morning realizing, God, so often as Tish just demonstrated in her signs, song, God, there's times when I may not feel your presence when the pain is so bad or when the situation has been so dramatic. God, I may not realize, God, that you're here. So I just ask in for this total congregation just to say, God, I want to just hold on. And God, you could answer me as you did in your word. And you said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And God, I want to tell you thank you for me and this congregation. Thank you for your healing physically. Thank you for providing every need that we have. And thank you, God, for making it possible that my name and every person in this sanctuary can be written down in the Lamb's Book of Life if we will just accept you and confess. God bless Brother Richard as he comes to preach. God, I pray that you'll anoint him, you'll speak through him, and God, that our ears will hear, our heart will respond, and our legs will carry the message to someone who may be lost. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It is truly wonderful to be in the house of the Lord again. Amen. To come out here uh, this morning and uh, see everybody's smiling faces. Well, okay. <laughs> but uh, I understand. About the best we can do. But anyway, <laughs> it is good to be here. 
And we appreciate the blessing of the Lord and how that he has provided thus far in this service. I appreciate uh, the songs that were sang uh, this morning. They go again right along with what we're talking about. Uh, the Lord is really being rich towards us. And uh, I, again, like to say we are thankful to see everyone out. Good to see Brenda back again. And uh, also uh, everyone here. My wife made it back. Hey, yeah, amen. She's feeling much better. And... Um, She's uh, looking forward to having her time where she can get everything put back together like it's supposed to be. <laughs> and also, uh, Tish, I appreciate that this morning. Lauren Dangle's one of my favorites. <laughs> and, uh, but we just uh, appreciate the blessing of the Lord. She put me off for, what, about three months now uh, in there. But uh, she did get up here, and we appreciate her ble uh, blessing the church and God blessing us through her ministry. Everything that you do for God is a ministry of sort. Yes. And you need to acknowledge that and to pray about it and ask God for His anointing. And whatever that you're doing, it's not just preaching. Uh, you are ministering through whatever means that God opens the door and allows you to share and to share His love and Word. But if you have your Bibles, I would like for us to uh, turn to the 98th Psalm. Uh, Mia hunted me down. And got this ready. That girl is right on the spot. But the 98th Psalm. We're going to try to get as much of this done this morning as we possibly can. Um, we may have to carry some of it over into the, tonight. If not, we'll do something different. But um, the 98th Psalm, glad to hear all them pages rustling. Amen. So sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things he has done marvelous things, his right hand and his holy arm hath gotten him the victory. I want to read that one more time. O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things, his right hand and his holy arm hath gotten him the victory. The Lord hath made known his salvation, his righteousness hath he openly showed in the sight of the heathen. He hath remembered his mercy and his truth toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord all the earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise. Let us pray. Our Father God in heaven, I thank you, Lord, for your goodness and grace. I thank you for the privilege of being back in the house of worship again. I thank you for this congregation of people that have come out to hear and, Lord, to receive of you. And, Father, I pray that you would take and put your blessing and anointing upon your word, O God, that we might hear what thus saith the Lord. For, God, we are hungry for your goodness, and God, for your righteousness. And Father, we bless you, and Lord, we lift you up in this house. In Jesus' loving name, amen. amen. Reading, I'm just going to read one verse over Psalms 100. The fifth chapter verse says, For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. Amen. 
I was looking for a thought, a title, whatever, uh, to put on all of this. And the only thing I could do to come up with was dilemma and cure. That's all I could come up with. Now, if you have something better than that, write it down and hand me a note after service. But dilemma and cure. We are a perplexed people. I mean it, seriously. We look around us, everything that is going on with everything that's happening about us is causing confusion. It's causing dilemma. It's causing an upheavalness uh, among the people of God. But there's one thing about it. As we just read over here in the 98th Psalm, the Lord has everything under control. He did from before the foundation of the world. This didn't just happen at Calvary. It was already predestined. It was already pre-planned. It was in the order of God before the first words were spoken over this world. God had everything already prepared. He saw today. He saw us in the house of God. He saw what needs that we brought into the house of the Lord, whatever they may be. And there are a lot of needs among us. Some things are physical needs, or we need healings, or we need deliverances from circumstances or problems in our life. Maybe it is that we have a financial problem or other problems that we have, and we are in the house of the Lord today, and we are under the influence of the Spirit of God. Because where that the people of God are, the Lord is in the midst. Whatever it is, we have a need, let us express it. Bring it before the elders of the church. Let us pray over it. Let us seek God. And in his time, and Brother Jimmy was talking about that uh, just a few minutes ago, but in his time, God will hear and answer. Now, let me say this. You pray, God has already heard. You ask God, God has already heard. You seek the blessing of God, God has already heard. You knock on that door. God is already prepared to answer that knock. But what it is, is you have to believe God above everything else. And that's what we're going to be talking about today and tonight. We, everything that we've talked about up to today has a joint connection with the things that were already said. We have, a, we have to believe God that above everything else, He has already heard our petition. He has already heard our cry. Now, what does all of that amount to? That amounts to faith. Praise the Lord. It's just faith now. We are coming up here, and, and let me tell you, I've, the only problems that I have with this new wave religion that we have today is they want to put God in a genie bottle so that any time they have something, they can just rub that bottle or whatever, that lamp, and the genie is going to appear and answer the need. Or they want to have God as a puppet on a string that we can pull strings and whatever it is that we need, God is bound to answer. Let me tell you something. I know you can name it and I know you can claim it. But there's one thing about it. You're still going to have to wait on God. Because he is still God and none other. It's not you. It's God. We have a need. Let us bring it before the elders of the church to pray. And when we do, then believe God. When you bring your gift to the altar, leave it there. Don't take it back with you. Leave it there. And when you go away, go away rejoicing. Why? Because God has all of that under control back there. You don't have to worry about it anymore. Amen. Oh, yeah, amen. I was up early this morning reading all this. But we sing a new song. When we sing our song for the Lord, 
We sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things. Those things that have happened in your life, praise God, they're new. They're fresh. Let me tell you something. Every morning you get up, you need to be thanking God that laid out there in the fields, there's not a crop to be gathered. There's not a labor that has to be done other than just walk out among the manna and pick up all that you want for God has already provided. Amen. Amen. It's there. It is his manna, not yours. It's his. And when the time has passed, of that manna, don't try to hold it and don't try to hang on to it. Just get ready for tomorrow because there's going to be another harvest right outside of your door. All you got to do is walk out there and receive it. When you start talking about what I need from God, understand that God already has an answer. He's already prepared a way. He's already supplied that need. Whatever it is, God is going to answer. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Lord hath made known his salvation. You know, we we have, the Bible said that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. So you don't have a corner on that. Sin is already there. It's on you, it's in you, it's around you, it's about you. So you don't have a corner on that market. But see, God, the Bible said he made his salvation known. Praise the Lord. What happens in your life is that God has the answer already. And as you start seeking him, and as you start believing God, that answer is already coming. And when that salvation is upon you and you realize all of a sudden I was lost without hope. But praise God, somewhere down the line, I heard the word of the Lord. You know, you, you're going to hear God and it's amazing. We live in a crooked and a perverse land. We live in a, a, a place where if you looked at it, you'd say, oh me, I just need to go jump off a cliff somewhere. Well, I'm not, because I'm waiting. Praise the Lord. The more I see, the more excited I get. Amen. The more that I understand what God is doing, and the more that I understand how that he is providing in the world, I'm standing back here saying, I'm getting excited about this. Why? Because I can hear him warming the trumpet up. Praise the Lord. I know that things are about to happen and I'm excited about it, Brother God, and I'm excited about what God is about to do. Why? Because he's made his salvation known in the earth. I watched the one-eyed devil and you know, I I stand back and I just kind of chuckle sometimes. You have people that you know good and well that if you talk to them about coming into the house of the Lord, they'd look at you like you fell off a turnip truck. And I know there are people on there that have, they will speak some of the most ungodly things that can ever be spoken out of somebody's mouth. Now let me tell you what else I listen for. The things that I'm listening for, it's all of a sudden, right in the middle of everything, they'll quote a scripture. They'll say something out of the word of God. They didn't mean to come over here and tell somebody something about Christ or something about the living God. That was not their purpose. It was just something that was inside and they didn't know how to handle it. The Bible said that he is making known, praise God, his salvation. Whatever's being said, they can be talking about 10,000 things that are wrong, but praise God, they slipped up and God allowed that word of his to come out. And let me tell you something, there are millions of people watching this 
And out of those millions of people, you wonder how many that that bird went down inside Sister Carol and touched an old heart and turned that old heart of stone into a heart of flesh that it can be touched by the finger of God and they can be delivered. God is making his salvation known. Praise the Lord no matter what. Amen. 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 Dilemma and cure. Sounds good anyway. He's remembered his mercy. Praise the Lord. He's remembered his mercy and his truth toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of God. He's remembered. He hasn't forgotten. We may feel like sometimes we've been abandoned, left, no hope. Praise God, they're just, you know, the whole place is just rolling up. I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, I just, everything's just bad. Praise the Lord. Listen, when I get down in the mullet grubs, and I get the feeling, well, you just have to put it in this simple vernacular uh, the current, uh, I get to having a pity party, uh, uh, one of them self-pity parties, and I feel like I'm the only one that's got a problem. I told you how it was with the 5,000 soldiers marching, and right out there in the back of it, there was one soldier, he was out of step. They were going right, left, he was going left, right, they would... Everything was all out of kilter back there where he was. And his mother was mad as torment. She said, I don't understand it. How that that many men can be wrong and my son the only one that's right. <laughs> and that's the way we feel sometimes. It doesn't matter. I feel bad. I feel terrible. Everything's going awry. Well, the Bible said that as we read there in Psalms that his truth, his truth, his mercy, and his truth endureth to all generations. Praise God. And it is God who has taken that word of his and made it known. Just think for just a minute. Now they tell us, uh, they tell us it takes billions of years, billions of years, and things change. Isn't that amazing? Billions of years, and a goat can become an elephant, I guess. I mean, it's possible. And, uh, yeah, it's possible, all right. But the thing of it is that they tell us it takes forever to get anything done. You know why they tell you that? Because you won't ever live long enough to see it. So they can tell you anything. There won't be enough books written or stories told to be able to record that changing. I'm still looking for the missing link. That's all I need is the missing link. You may tell you where the missing link is. His name is Jesus. Praise God. He's the missing link between man and God. And he has made him known. Praise the Lord. But we're serving a God who cares. We're serving a God who has made everything known and we are looking at things that are going to take billions of years to change. Well, I want you just, I looked up here this morning. I was close enough to see them. The choir looks so beautiful. Looks so good. Sang so wonderfully uh, this morning. I look out here and a congregation of people, you look beautiful, every one of you. I know, quit elbowing that one side of you. But anyway, you look beautiful. 
And you're here, why? Because you want to hear the Word of God. Because you want to worship God. Because you want to be lifted up in soul and spirit and be able to rejoice in the heavenly places. Praise God. You're here for that. Now, just think back. We're not talking billions and billions of years ago. We're not talking a couple of hundred thousand years ago. We're not talking 10 or 20 thousand years ago. We're talking just 2,000 years ago, there were a, a man that came on the scene. He came from humble beginnings, born and laid in a manger. And he dwelled among us. And he grew up. And when he turned 30 years of age, God brought him out. And he was here for a whole three and a half years. Three and a half years. In a desert place. In a place that was oppressed. Among a people that were oppressed. They were controlled and ruled by an evil taskmaster, Rome. But he went wherever he went, healing the sick, praying for people to be lifted up, changing lives. He had 12 men with him, and one of them had a devil in him. But out of that little group of people, 2,000 years ago, off in a foreign land, in a desert place, I loved it when they, the people of the city came out and they approached the disciples of Christ. And they told them, these are they that are turning the world upside down for Jesus. What is happening? God is making known his salvation. And that word is not going to go back into him void, but it's going to accomplish everything that he sent it out to do. Amen. We can fight it. We can resist it. We can do everything that we can. But the dilemma is we're lost. But praise God, there is a cure, and his name is Jesus. And we can believe God and trust him above everything else. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many hours I got left? Oh, yes. Plenty. Now, over here in the uh, Hebrews, I made mention of this the other day, and I told you everything has a corner connection. And if we go back and do that, and, and I told uh, Mia, the 11th chapter, and that's, I want her to be there. But I want to back up just three verses, or two verses, and, and read. It said, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Now I know that we have that dilemma. I know that we are trying our best to believe God. Well, let me tell you something. Quit trying and just do it. Amen. Amen. You won't ever justify anything that you're doing. You won't ever be able to step back, Brother David, and say, well, I've done everything as that." I've done everything from my youth up. I've done it all right. No, we won't ever be able to do that. Why? Because we've all failed and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, none of us, nobody. But praise God for the blood flow of Jesus Christ from Calvary. Because he reached down 
And as I made mention, he, he looked beyond my fault, saw my need, and when he looked into my heart, he said, I can change that if you'll just come unto me. And I said, Lord, here I am. Use me to whatever capacity that, I, that you can, whatever that you can possibly do. Use whatever this is. I know there's not much of it. And they're not much usable even at that. But God can take five little loaves of bread and a few fishes and feed the thousands. Praise God. I believe God is able and capable of whatever that we have need in our life. Whatever it is. God is able to take it and use it. He has made known his salvation throughout the world. He has made known all the things that God has for his people. There's so much that we are standing back and saying, well, I wish I could pray for somebody and they'd be healed. Now, don't look at me like I fell off a turnip truck. I've heard those words. I would that God would touch my life and make me as faithful as old sister so-and-so. You don't know what sister so-and-so is going through. You don't know what sister so-and-so is going through. You be asking for that kind of faith, you better be prepared to get made ready for it. Amen. God has a plan for your life. For your life. He'll use you in any way that he possibly can. I, I thank God that I had a, a youth director. Now, don't think that we're talking about youth and children's church and all that like, oh, well, send them off out there and they'll go to the babysitters. No, sir. They're learning they're hearing the word of God. Brother, I heard you this morning when you told me, cut this thing short, we got to beat the first Baptist to Danis. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So I'm doing my very best. But God is so good. I'm so thankful for our pastor. I'm thanking God that he's sitting there without that neck brace on right now. Thank God. That's progress. Progress. One of these mornings, he's going to step up here. And it'll be the Danny program. Amen. Amen. I'm looking forward to that. But God has made his salvation known. All we have to do is trust and obey. Let us bow our heads. Our Father God in heaven, I thank you, Lord, for the privilege that it is that we have been able to be in the house of the Lord today. I thank you, God, that you have spoken to our hearts and, Lord, our lives. Lord, let us rejoice as we go forth. Let us remember your words, and, Lord, let us take them as an iron pen and pen them on a stone, O oh Lord, in our heart, that, God, that we not forget them and that we sin not against God, but, Lord, that we hold them truth. And, Lord, we always understand that your mercy and your truth endureth to all generations. Father, we're thankful that you have made this known unto us. And, God, we are blessing you right now. We are praising you. And, Lord, we're looking forward to the time that we can come back out into your house, that we can hear of you again. And, that, Lord, the wonderful, joyful day that our pastor gets to come back and speak to us once again. And Father, we bless you now. And we ask you for these blessings in Jesus' loving and holy name. Stephen, good to have you with us today, son. Amen.